Hi everybody, today we're going to learn about one of the best sorting algorithms that has ever been created. We're going to learn about merge sort. And what makes merge sort pretty great is that it's very consistent in how fast it runs and it works across all kinds of data types, not just numbers, not just words, but if you have something that can be sorted in a logical way, merge sort is going to be great at sorting it. And so the way merge sort works is that it uses a step-by-step -step process to sort a collection of values by breaking the list into smaller pieces and then putting them back together in the right order. Now, this should probably trigger a very common type of sorting algorithm that we have run into, and that is the divide and conquer sorting algorithm. And merge sort is considered probably the poster child for what a good divide and conquer sorting algorithm can be. Now, before we get into the details of how merge sort works, I just want to quickly mention that if you want to learn more about data structures and algorithms in a nice, friendly, beginner-friendly way, check out my best-selling book, Algorithms, Absolute Beginner's Guide, available in paperback and Kindle editions, and in physical bookstores, and in virtual bookstores. You can find it there, so links for all that below. Now, getting back to our regularly scheduled merge sort conversation. To best way to understand how merge sort works is by taking an example of unsorted values and using merge sort to sort them. And so let's start with our unsorted values. We have 5, 12, 4, 1, 2, 8, 2, 6, 10. So some numbers, not really sorted, and so we're going to go ahead and sort them. Now, because merge sort is a divide and conquer algorithm, the first step we're going to do is start dividing up our values into halves, or as close to halves as we can. And so what we do from our initial input is break this up into two halves, which is in this case is going to be 5, 12, 4, 1, and 2 will be one half of our problem, 8, 2, 6, and 10 will be the other half of our problem. And we keep repeating this division process until we have no more items that we can further divide. So our next step is to divide each of these inputs into further smaller inputs. So we you know, our 5, 12, 4, 1, and 2 now breaks up into two individual segments, one segment being 5, 12, and 4, other one being 1 and 2. On the right-hand side, 8, 2, 6, and 10 becomes 8, 2, 6, and 10. And then we keep repeating this until we get to the point where we have no more you know, individual items that can be divided, which basically means that we're left with a single item. And you can see that in some cases, the items get divided early and we just continue on with the process. And in other cases, some of the items don't get divided quickly enough, like the five and 12. So we keep repeating the entire division until we get to a collection where all of our items are now individually identified. So this is the divide part of merge sort and here we are at the I'd say the halfway mark of being able to say we're getting close to sorting our values. Now comes the the part where we merge all the values back together. We merge them and we sort them, the, the conquer part of divide and conquer. So what we do now is in many ways we kind of undo all the division that we did earlier but the, what we do instead though is not just blindly merge all the values back, we merge them back you know in sequence but making sure the values are sorted as part of being merged. So for example here 5 and 12, 5 is less than 12, it merges just properly. With 4 and 1 though we know that 4 is greater than 1 and that doesn't exactly help us, you know, sort the values correctly. So we swap the order and we merge them together as one and four. Similarly, two and eight, two and six, and 10 doesn't really have an equivalent pair to merge with or compare itself with. So just bring it down for the ride without any modifications. So now what we have is a semi-sorted collection of values where the first value is sorted, the second value, if available, is you know, larger than the first value. And we continue the merging process and also doing the sorting as well. So now we combine the first two pairs, in this case 5, 12, 1, and 4, and when we merge them, the sorted order is going to be 1, 4, 5, and 12. Similarly, 2, 8, and 2, and 6 are merged, and the sorted order for them will be 2, 2, 6, and 8. 10, again, is the odd one out. It gets carried down without any merging or sorting happening to it. So now we get to the next step, in which case we have you know, two set, you know, two groups of four values that we need to sort and merge. And now when we merge the 1, 4, 5, and 12, and the 2, 2, 6, and 8 together, they are now merged together as 1, 2, 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 12. 
10. Again, it's just there, the, you know, almost like a third wheel in a bicycle. And lastly, we merge the 10 with the large collection we have right now, and we place it all together. We now have our, fine, our fully sorted collection of values. 1, 2, 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, and 12. So we had to take a step back and visualize the full path our numbers took to being sorted. You can kind of see at the very top, we start off with the, our unsorted values initially. About halfway through, we are doing nothing but dividing until we get to individual units. And then we spend the rest of the half going back and combining them and sorting them at the same time. The top half is divide, bottom half is conquer. And what we have are left with is a fully sorted collection of values. Really cool. So let's talk about the performance characteristics of merge sort. It's one of the fastest sorting algorithms and it runs consistently with a time complexity of big O of n log n and it takes up a big O of n space, which is you know not bad, not great, but it can be a lot worse. So let's, let's take that as a win. So if you look at the best case, worst case, and average case, they're all big O of n log n, which is actually quite convenient and makes it very predictable. You don't have to worry about odd inputs suddenly causing your algorithm to behave in very bad ways. And the merge sort algorithm, if we had simplified greatly, we kind of talked about the divide and conquer solution, is that step one, it just divides. It divides the inputs into subsections until there's only one element left in each section. We saw that with our example earlier. And step two is it merges and sorts all its subsections back into one big section that is now, of course, sorted. And so if we look at the, the way you can visualize kind of this is that we, let's say we have n values at the very top. At each layer, as we keep dividing it, we go n over two, n over four, and that can be simplified by the expression n over two to the power of k, where k is the, the depth of the values that you're currently thinking about. In typical trees, especially binary trees like we have here, the depth of the tree is gonna be log of n. And that you can see by the left side where you say tree depth equals log of n. The number of operations we do at each level as part of doing the comparison and merging and all of that, it's, going to, it's a linear operation, it's n. And so for a tree, the total operation is gonna be the tree depth multiplied by the operations, which leads to a value of n log n. And now when it comes to space, the typical merge sort implementation like the one that we're going to be using here will take up big O of n, but more specifically, it's going to be two n space. You know, with big O, we kind of ignore all of the modifiers that you know change the factor greatly. So two n becomes big O of n, and you know it's not the best solution when it comes to sorting algorithms. There are many sorting algorithms we've seen that are in constant time or even logarithmic time in how much space they are logarithmic space, not time, in what they do. But two of n is not bad given that we get additional benefits of just how good merge sort is. But if you're dealing with sorting your values within a fixed region of limited memory, or you're gonna go really back in time and do like a, a steady tape drive where you can't really go from one value to another, merge sort might have some issues as your preferred choice for sorting. Now the implementation for merge sort in many ways mimics exactly the description we saw and how it works. We have a lot of loops, we have a lot of division, a lot of merging. It's a recursive algorithm, but there are iterative versions of it as well. To learn about how to implement merge sort, check out my article all about merge sort on krupa.com. The best way for you to get there is just go to Google, type in Krupa, merge sort, and the first results will be the article in question. And if you scroll down, you'll see the JavaScript implementation and explanation of how the code actually works. Now, merge sort is pretty great. I mean, there's no other way of saying it. It's actually, you know, I always like to call it the, it's a Toyota of sorting algorithm. It's very reliable, very good for many purposes. It's not the fastest sorting algorithm and there are faster versions of algorithms that are, you know, very specifically optimized for positive numbers, for example, as you saw with radix sort or with counting sort, or you have quick sort, which is actually really fast and oftentimes faster than merge sort, but it has degenerative cases where quick sort can, with the right input, be very, very slow and cause all sorts of problems in how long it takes to run things. So a clever attacker, for example, if they know you're using quick sort as a sorting algorithm, can modify the input to cause major problems. So merge sort is consistently big O of n log n. That consistency is often worth a lot more than a few microseconds of performance optimizations you might get from other sorting algorithms. And it's also stable. So if you care about the relative order of items as they're being sorted, merge sort is just the right choice for you.
as well. And so with that, if you have any questions and you want to, learn to talk about merge sort or anything else related to just how to use our various sorting algorithms or web development topics, check out the forums at forum.group.com where I and others will be very happy to help you out. To be notified of more videos that I keep making on a regular basis, like, comment, subscribe to let both your friends and your enemies know all about it. Sign up for the newsletter to get some updates in your inbox on things that I'm building or go to at Karupa on Twitter or X as people call it these days to get bite-sized updates on things that I'm interested in reading or creating or sharing. And lastly, I wrote a lot of books, not just on data structures and algorithms, but on other topics as well. So link below, check them all out. You might find some that's pretty interesting and they make good gifts. You know, just something to think about. And with that, I'll see you all next time.